Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, esteemed panelists. Um, thanks to Business World and its uh, partners for putting the spotlight on leading with purpose towards empowerment. This panel discussion is indeed impeccably timed, coinciding with the culmination of India's G20 presidency. Indeed, a pivotal moment for us on the global stage with the eyes of the world trained on us, on India and its leadership. Um, in this age, we often find ourselves amidst a new world order. A population of 8 billion strong, we became 8 billion last year, and offering an abundance of resources. And in our efforts to lead, stay close to profit margins and organizational growth, we tend to lose why we do what we do. Purpose and empowerment um, stay as tokenistic or symbolic endeavors, sadly, rather than being ingrained in the business strategy. So what do we really mean by purpose and empowerment? Simply put, it prioritizes aligning leaders' actions with a meaningful purpose, transcending traditional notions of control. And in the current landscape of rapid and intricate change, this leadership style emerges as a beacon of effectiveness, particularly when compared to traditional top-down approaches. Having said that, today we are here to discuss, learn, and may I um, also say unlearn, how purpose-driven leadership can catalyze positive change within our organizations, fostering empowerment and inclusivity. Hence, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce the distinguished panel of experts who bring forth diversity and will help us unpack the different facets of their leadership style. So, <clears throat> um, please welcome Mr. Amitav Shah. He's the founder and chief Innovation information officer, Yuva Unstoppable. And he's the youngest Indian to win the US government's Ellis Island Award given previously to President Bill Clinton, George Bush, boxer Muhammad Ali, Indra Nui, Malala Yousafzai, and other legends. I also, we also have today Ms. Ashwarya Dua. She's the founder and chief executive officer, Sassiest. And uh, it's a pioneering sexual health and pleasure brand exclusively designed for women and backed by medical professionals. Miss um, uh, Deepika Narayan Bhadwaj, she's an Indian journalist, documentary filmmaker, and a social activist. Uh, she's the recipient of many awards, one being Swami Vivekananda Yuva Samman Award. And interestingly, in times when everyone's emphatically talking about women's rights, Deepika makes a strong case for protection of rights of men, too. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Smita Roy, she's the co-founder and managing trustee People Tree Foundation. And she is enthusiastic about uh, making a difference in the lives of the less fortunate children and women from disadvantaged areas. Uh, Deepika has devoted, Smita, sorry, Smita has devoted 20 years of her life towards project empowering women and teaching them to be self-reliant. Welcome, welcome Smita. Uh, Mr. Savesh Mishra, spokesperson Ahmad Nipati. He's a dedicated advocate for social change and he of course saw, serves as the spokesperson for R. In addition to managing the parliamentary affairs of Rajya Sabha member Sanjay Singh, he's also passionate about uplifting unprivileged children. And finally, uh, Mr. Arjun Mishra is the co-founder of Nabet India. He is a dedicated advocate for social inclusion and employment opportunities for differently abled and undeserved communities. Uh, with over 13 years of relentless um, commitment, co-founded Nabet India, and it's a prominent NGO that has revolutionized the landscape of disability and underserved community. So extremely uh, thankful to have such a diverse panelist today. Uh, well, and with this, I would like to, you know, uh, straight away go to the uh, panel discussion. And my first question is in fact posed to all the panelists out here. 
So if I may ask, and uh, just to be mindful, some house rules, um, it's a tight panel discussion and I've got all of you amazing speakers, so uh, may I request that the answers be short uh, so that we get enough time towards the end to even have Q&A with the, uh, our participants and the audiences today. So yes, um, <clears throat> it's a, let me begin with a very generic question. Uh, what does purpose and leadership mean for you as an individual, as a leader? And why do you think it's so critical? That's part one. And uh, secondly, also, it would be really helpful to me and I'm sure to, for everybody out here, if you could also give examples of organizations or leaders that you feel have excelled due to a clear purpose. I can take that first. Thank you, thank you, Pinky, for that. I think we should also have a round of applause for Pinky for facilitating and coordinating so nicely. So talking about purpose and leadership, the first question, uh, you know, a lot of times, all of us in the social sector have been asked to think that we are supposed to be Robin Hood, take money from the rich and give to the poor, right? And hum agar bacho ki ya jo bhi seva kar rahe jiski bhi, has to be from the less privileged background. You know, over the last 20 years in Yuan Stoppable, we've built about, transformed 5,000 schools with sanitation, technology, solar, water harvesting. And recently, my purpose kind of became, and the leadership became a little more clearer, where I thought that I'm supposed to do seva, not just for the kids, but of everyone I meet. Be it a billionaire, be it a CEO, be it a politician, be it a teacher, be it a principal, uh, be it this wonderful audience, and the children. So can seva, go beyond just serving the less privileged and you become a force of seva where whoever you meet, maybe you give a kind word, you speak uh, sweetly, uh, you advise them on something good, you give them some positive thoughts, maybe help with your time, talent or treasure. So can you kind of continue to give seva to everyone you meet everywhere you go? Be it the CEO or be it the janitor or be it the security guard who's receiving us, and not just thinking the traditional way that, you know, I need to collect from the rich and give to the poor. And a second answer for that as well is what I've seen a lot in leadership, especially in the social world is that people are doing a lot of fundraising these days. Okay, my ex, my cause is very good, I'm doing animals, I'm doing money, I'm doing blood donation, I'm doing money, I'm doing schools, I'm doing money, I'm doing my business idea is very good, startup is very good, I'm doing money. But we need to change towards friend raising and not fundraising. We need to look at people as people and make friends with them and add value in whatever way we can to whoever the person we are interacting with and not see it as a transaction. And I think that's a very important part of leadership that you mentioned. And the last part of the question was, who's one role model that I have? It's uh, absolutely Abdul Kalam. He used to come to our NGO, You Are Unstoppable, many, many times and uh, keep guiding us on different initiatives. But one time I went and asked him, how can we change the country? So I thought he would say, infrastructure improve, karo, health improve, karo, education improve. Karo. But he said, Amitabh, go to your mother and smile to your mother. I said, if my mother will smile, how will the country change? He said, if your mother smiles first, who will smile? I said, well, obviously my father. If your parents are smiling, I said, me and my brother. If the family is smiling, the society and the city and the country. So every year we would make thousands of students write down stories of how they made their mother smile. He said, well, mommy ke pair the bad, dhokla banaya, bahut kara to paro kha gai, piggy bank toad ke mein, dress laya, wo dos size badi thi, but mom said, I'm gonna keep it, mene kavita likhi, and Kalam would come twice a year and spend time with the best 50 stories and moms. So I think uh, the best role models are people who have kept things simple, mm -hmm. uh, and he was one of them and he amplified that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so my idea about transformation or what is leadership by purpose is to question the status norm, the status quo. So I work for persons with disabilities and I've been working in this space for the last 13 years. And the first thing which comes when an NGO approaches, working in the disability sector, approaches a corporate, they feel we come asking for charity. And that I feel is, you know, maybe demeaning to the cause. We come here because we ask for an opportunity of employment, because we consider our you know, beneficiaries who we serve competent. When we provide services that are proficient, I don't think we need charity, we need an opportunity. And then when the status shifts from a you know, charity first to an opportunity first, I think that's where you know, it's about redefining how do you see disability. 
and that's where the NGO is unique. So uh, whilst we've worked for many years, over the uh, last 13 years we've worked for people with disabilities, what I've come to understand is it's never the disability which is the challenge, it's the way, the prism to which we see it, uh, which needs to be redefined. And a leader who I you know, envision and envy a lot uh, is Mr. Tata. So when he, you know, what he did was he put himself at risk. He tried things, he experimented with ideas, they failed at times, but that, that's fine. Not, there won't be any leader who will always be successful. There will be some who may have some failures. The question is not whether you were successful or not. It's about, you know, could you experiment with an idea? Did you have the boldness and the leadership to try it? And eventually, even if it's failed, you attempted and you made a very strong attempt to it. That's what I define as purposeful leadership. Thanks. Um, Pinky, for me, leadership with purpose is all about having one cause that is very close to your heart and ensuring each and every single day of your life to work towards that cause. Until unless you have a purpose and a cause uh, that you are willing to sacrifice your life for, um, I think neither can you be a leader or nor you can create the leadership that's required to inspire people. Uh, especially in the space that I operate, it's a very, very tough space uh, because not many people think that men also need some kind of empowerment, men also need some, kind, some person to fight for them. And the role model for me uh, are my parents. बहुत सारे लोगों ने सुना होगा कि सब लोग ये सोचते हैं कि पड़ोस वाले घर से एक्टिविस्ट निकल जाए पड़ोस वाले घर से कोई ऐसा निकल जाए जो लड़ाई लड़े समाज के लिए बट बहुत कम लोग होते हैं जो अपने घर से एक एक्टिविस्ट को एक्सेप्ट करते हैं सो माय रोल मॉडल्स आर माय पेरेंट्स हु हैव अलाउड मी टू एक्चुअली वर्क इन दिस स्पेस एंड एक्चुअली स्ट्रगलिंग अ लॉट एंड सींग माई चैलेंजेस एवरी सिंगल डे एंड स्टिल आस्किंग मी टू गो हैड थैंक यू पॉलिटिकल लोगों को ऐसे आंसर देना थोड़ा अलग सा हो जाता है आ, मैं इस देश के एक सबसे तेज़ी से बढ़ते हुए पॉलिटिकल स्टार्टअप से हूँ आम आदमी पार्टी से जिसने 10 साल में ही इस देश की एक नेशनल पार्टी बन गए हम जैसे तमाम लोग जो गांव में रहते थे शहरों में पढ़ने को आए थे और बिना किसी तैयारी के पॉलिटिक्स में आ गए और उनको काफ़ी अच्छी जगह दी आम आदमी पार्टी जैसे बात दो क्वेश्चंस की की उन्होंने पर्पस की पहला मैं पर्पस क्या बताता हूँ मैं यू पी की तैयारी करता था तमाम हमारे साथ लोग मुखर्जी नगर में थे करते थे हम लोगों का एक पर्पस था एक करप्शन फ्री इंडिया का एक अच्छी गवर्नेंस का एक अच्छा डिलीवर करने का जैसे मैं गांव से आता हूँ वहाँ अच्छी एजुकेशन नहीं थी स्कूल्स नहीं थे उनको लाने का तो आम आदमी पार्टी में हमें एक पर्पज़ मिला और उस पर्पज हमारे पर्पज से मैच करता था तो मेरे जैसे तमाम लड़के थे जो यूपी बिहार तमाम दूसरे स्टेट्स के जिनका पर्पज मैच हुआ और वो आ गए और हमने बाद में रिजल्ट भी देखा कि आम आदमी पार्टी का एक कॉन्सेप्ट था स्मार्ट गवर्नमेंट्स का स्मार्ट गवर्नमेंट को मैं डिफाइन करूंगा तो एक ऐसे ही सिंपल मोरल अकाउंटेबल रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट गवर्नमेंट का हम लोगों ने समय के साथ देखा स्कूल टाइम से आए हमारे जो लीडर्स का विज़न था उनका जो पर्पस था वो क्लियर था और आज सक्सेसफुली हम देखते भी हैं कि पॉलिटिक्स के सेंटर में जिन चीज़ों को हम अपने स्कूल टाइम पे कॉलेज टाइम पे चाहते थे कि पॉलिटिक्स के रूट में जो सेंटर है उसमें एजुकेशन हेल्थ बिजली पानी बेसिक एम्यूनिटीज़ हों पहले हम लोग किताबों में पढ़ते थे यू के लिए तैयारी करते थे एक अच्छा सौभाग्य मिला हम लोग को अपने कुछ ही समय में कि हम जब राजनीति में आए तो हम इसी पॉलिटिकल स्टार्टअप में इन्हीं सब चीज़ों पे हम वोट मांगने लगे और दूसरे स्टेट्स में भी गए और लोगों ने हमें सराहा और आज पूरे देश में हम अपने मामलों पे ही आगे आते हैं दूसरी एक चीज़ मैं आपको बताता हूँ कि तमाम बार हम लोग अपने रोल मॉडल्स और उन पर जाते हैं अभी तक जैसे मैं आया मैंने तमाम जगहों पर तमाम चीज़ों से सीखी एक आपको इंसिडेंट का जिक्र कर रहा हूँ Uh, 2012 या 13 uh, का समय था किरण बेदी मैम का एक प्रोग्राम यूपी के ललितपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में होने वाला था एक पब्लिक अवेयरनेस कैंपेन था जो जल लोकपाल को लेके था तो मैं मनीष सिसोदिया सर के साथ गया था उनसे मैंने पूछा उस समय हम लोग काफ़ी जोश में रहते थे लगता था कि बस कल देश बदल जाएगा एक महीने में ये कानून आ जाएगा और देश बदल जाएगा फिर हम अपने कॉलेज को लौट जाएँगे फिर पढ़ाइयाँ करने लगेंगे 
तो उनसे बात हुई होटल में वो तैयार होते हमने कहा कि बस कितने दिन में ये सब कुछ हो जाएगा जल लोकपाल आ जाएगा सब चेंजेस आ जाएंगे क्योंकि हमें अपने कॉलेज की पढ़ाई स्टार्ट करनी है बीच में काफ़ी मिस हो रही है तो उन्होंने कहा था कि देखो अगर तुम्हें यू अगर क्लियर है कि तुम्हें उधर जाना है तो तुम जाओ क्योंकि मुझे लगता है कि ये लड़ाई बीस साल चलेगी और अगर तुम बीस साल के लिए तैयार हो तो यहाँ पर आओ उस समय में ग्रेजुएशन में था ऐसे ढेर सारे लोगों ने समय समय पर रास्ता दिखाया है जिन नेता के साथ संजय सिंह जी के साथ रहता हूँ उन्होंने भी दिखाया है वो वो भी एक अलग बैकग्राउंड से हैं उनके एक भाई अमेरिका में और दूसरी तरीके की फैमिली रहती है और एक वो बड़े हैं वो सीधे आंदोलन क्रांति और इस तरीके Sorry. के फील्ड में रहते हैं तो ये so, मेरे yeah. हाँ तो दूसरे चीज़ों का ये दूसरा जवाब था कि हमारे लाइफ में रोल मॉडल्स ऐसे ही छोटे छोटे इंसिडेंट्स रहे हैं और जो लोग रहे हैं जो समय समय पर हमें सिखाते रहते हैं थैंक यू सो मच या i i will agree with sarvesh ji on this there is not one single human being who has impacted i am a social entrepreneur and uh, i pick up i'll i'll do it quickly because he's eaten on my time uh, so i have uh, i will exactly exactly <laughs> so i pick i'm i'm the safai karmachari uh, in a just a better clothing uh, i pick up waste from garment factories textile waste basically from garment factories and boutiques and i convert the waste into beautiful products like cushion covers bed, bed runners table mats pouches travel pouches etc and these all these products are stitched by less privileged women in different slums across delhi and cr now we train the women first and then we provide them with the fabric and the raw material everything and then they start stitching i started selling off with amazon uh, you know through amazon and then amazon ka wo margin issues then i was not able to see much money then i started selling it through my own website and now we are a beautiful sustainable business so it's a social business now 100% of the profit we i have started a small school for less privileged children inside asiad village everybody knows asiad village from delhi uh, it's a very nice beautiful society wherein there was a very um, it it was there was a very bad area you know no man's land very dirty it was under mcd and itna gandagi tha to uh, once i was complaining so that land was given to me and i now if you come to the school you will never say it was you know it was a kuredan actually it was such a bad place I have a small school of 60 children right now, and uh, uh, 100% of the, the money that I make in my social business is, uh, you know, uh, going towards developing the children. We teach a lot of things to the children, including Taekwondo and everything. The biggest success story is so coming to the question: oh, who's who's inspiring? Everybody's inspiring. My women in my different slums, they're inspiring every day. When I look at their lives and the hardships that they face every day, and still they push and go forward is something. Puts me in a no. I'm like, I, I mean, there is no way I can complain. If they can do it, I mean, everybody should be able to do it. And kids, the children, इतने छोटे से चीजों में they are so happy. They teach me every day. They inspire me every day to be happy, irrespective of you know how small things comes to you and whatever big things. So it doesn't make a make a difference. Doesn't matter. Just be happy. So the beneficiaries that I work with, they are the inspiration every day. And uh, this was a question, right? Yes, yeah. totally. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. On to you, please. Hi everyone I am Ishwarya founder of Sasius thank you for having me here today so leading with purpose i guess uh, it's all about life purpose zindagi se aata hai aur uh, hum jis taraf ja rahe hain hamara to sirf ek hi purpose hai Sasius ka wo sirf itna hai ki har aurat jo hamare company mein ya jo mere paas aati hai wo ek smile karke chali jaye bas usse sab solve ho jata hai dusra अगर आप बात करेंगे लीडिंग विद पर्पस का महत्व क्या है तो वो सिंपल यही है कि जब आप ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस के साथ में काम करते हैं अप, अपनी कंपनी के अंदर या किसी के भी साथ आज मैं यहाँ पे भी हूँ तो आई गेस वी आर टुगेदर वी आर सिटिंग टुगेदर दैट टुगेदरनेस द पर्पस कैन ब्रिंग इट्स ऑल अबाउट दैट एंड आई गेस आई टेक अ वेरी रिसेंट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सक्सेस स्टोरी एंड द ब्रांड दैट आई एडमायर अ लॉट वेन इट कम्स टू दिस दे वर on their vision and that's why they are here and that is blinket right and uh, from grofers to blinket to what they wanted to be as a mini amazon and they are they are doing that and i guess that's what the thing and i should we, should, we all should be like doing that thank you thank you very interesting purpose could be something which is defying social norms uh, which is pushing you out of your comfort zone and it could also be something which you follow your parents like you know their footsteps and you define your purpose so thank you so much a uh, very interesting you know i have all the leaders here but let me also ask you that uh, you know what about the team 
how do you ensure that the team understands your passion your purpose and your leadership and i want to put this question over to three panelists uh, arjun amitabh and smita so because often in organizations the leaders they are they they believe in the dreams but you know when the team is not functioning fully uh, there's there's like some sort of legatus right so how do you deal with with this sure okay i can go first so uh, you are unstoppable but i started almost 20 years ago jab mere full set of hair the 20 saal aur main 20 saal ka tha tab और मेरे साथ जो यंगस्टर्स जुड़े हुए थे वो चौदह साल के तेरह साल के बारह साल के थे एंड द आइडिया वाज सिंपल दैट विल गो टू ऑर्फेनेज म्यूनसिपल स्कूल्स विद्याश्रम एंड स्पेंड टू आवर्स अ टाइम इन अ वीक विद देम टीचिंग मैथ साइंस डांस म्यूजिक इंग्लिश इन द स्कूल्स और स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद एल्डरली दैट इज हाउ वी स्टार्टेड नाउ ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी ऑफ दोज पीपल पिंकी दे डिसाइडेड दैट दिस इज ऑल विल डू फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ आर लाइफ टिल एवरी चाइल्ड गेट्स एजुकेशन एंड हेल्थ हम लोगों को बस सेवा ही करनी है आई थिंक वॉट इज मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इज दैट दे शुड बी पीपल विद गुड इंटेंशंस राइट वी कॉल इट कूल करेजियस एंड कंपैशनेट इन टूडेज टूडेज लेवल जो बातें करेंगे आज के यंगस्टर्स उसमें अगर ये तीन क्वालिटीज है तो टेक्निकल स्किल्स ऑल दीज थिंग्स कैन बी टॉट एंड सो नाउ वन ऑफ दोज गाइज वॉज फोर्टीन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन दे आर सी ई ओ सी एफ ओ सी टी ओ सी एम ओ इन माई माई एन जी ओ and now we mobilized more than 500 crores in just the last few years across india so and some of the best uh, people are coming and working with us the reason why the team was able to do this or the vision translated down was very simple is because we have started looking at kya ye banda 10 crore ka chanda laega mere liye agar main isko hire karu to itna ka itne 25 event karega agar main hire karu to mere wahan pe instead we need to see is he a good human being is he passionate does he have his heart in the right place baki sab technically hum sikha sakte and we have experienced that what about pay package it's very important so no it's 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 a it's a very good question and uh, i've never said this publicly but i'll say here now after 20 years so all of you will be surprised that so i don't draw a salary from you all and practically i don't personally have a bank account but i'm from a privileged family and my wife earns so she gives me a credit card The only time I use it when is a guru when I go to some temple to make a donation. But मेरी ज़रूरतें कम तो वजूद में दम. I think there is always enough money to take care of your needs. But greed का तो कोई अंती नहीं है. So I think you have to figure out what gives you the most joy. Who are your who? What kind of people are you going to enjoy being around? What kind of impact you are creating? You know, if you are part of a large thing where you are a small piece in the cog and your salary is higher. versus you are in some place where you are on ground implementing at scale you need to decide what gives you more joy so i don't think that people are only looking at money anymore in the social sector uh, and i went to yale for my mba and declined a wall street of offer with jp morgan 15 years ago of half a million to come back and work on the real streets and i think there's many many thousands of people like that in india now who are looking for cause purpose and who they are working with kyunki wo sang ka rang lagta hai true thank you so much so smita and arjun uh, just one quick question over that uh, do you agree with amitabh's statement that intention is the most important factor in in terms of having a team yeah but i also believe in show me the money honey <laughs> so if i was not able to make money if i wasn't an entrepreneur and i if i could not if i had to beg all the times you know going from one organization to the other to sustain my school or whatever that wouldn't that would i wouldn't like it that wouldn't be dignity you know so the i think money brings dignity if you can earn your own and you can sustain it of course if i have additional help if i can get fund then i can start up more schools like this that's another thing probably uh, if with an additional with partnership with associations i can do more but i think to become sustainable to earn the earning you know to earn it on your own is also very very important i think i have dignity in my home because i'm i'm business person and um, you know there are paychecks coming in also there are deposits coming in i think it's very important so could you share like one or two tips with our audience today on how you can align your team with a marketing vision sure or a charity vision okay so um i think i think we have to walk the talk we have to live it when my team sees me 
you know, constantly when we have meetings, I am, am I able to convey my thought process, my thought to them? They need to understand what the vision is. Uh, salary definitely will be created at the end of the month to their accounts, uh, to their, uh, you know, bank account. But are they, are they in line with my thought? You know, are they also, nobody has equal share, you know, fire in the belly. That is not possible. I mean, just tarah se humne shuru kiya tha, I started with no money, no, nobody, no crime, not even, I couldn't even speak Hindi well when I came to Delhi five years ago. But, uh, but because th that fire in the belly, I don't expect in anybody. But at least, uh, are they going to deliver what my vision is, what my thought process, that is enough, more than enough. So Thanks. I think that's Thanks. it. How about you, Arjun? So Pinky, I played with a very different set of problems. Um, for the first five years when we started operations, I used to go on down approaching companies and telling them that, uh, you know, I have a superlative talent pool. I have people with disabilities, but they will perform as proficiently as your resources and let data speak, let the performance speak and let that be the deciding factor whether or not you should outsource. And after, you know, rounds and rounds of discussion, what used to come out used to be that, um, can we write you a charity check? And I used to feel so dissuaded that I've made all that effort and so many follow-ups and after spending so much effort, if I felt that perhaps the commitment to the cause was questioned, perhaps I felt it was questioning the dignity or the abilities of the people who we were serving, which I was not up to. So for the first five years, I had you know checks which were being handed down and I refused them every time because I felt it's a, you know, it's something which is it's, it's downward spiraling. It will start from the first check and that's where the end. And then what will happen is that the mission would get questioned overall. The first five years I declined. The second thing around, you know, um, how can you build a team? Around that, you have to be very communicative. That's one. You have to have your ears to the ground. Any troublemaker you see in the organization, pinpoint, and you don't need to, you know, act on him yourself. The collective, the people who are part of the team, they may not have positions, they may not have any tags, managers, vice president, what not. They are connected to the cause, they understand what you stand for and why you've entered this. And because you're so committed to it, they would, you know, be the so-called khabris. They'll let you know what is happening inside the organizations. They'll give you instances of what's wrong. And what will happen is that you have to wait because yes, they can have, you know, uh, their, their own selfish interests and that's common. But you have to, you know, pinpoint the first instance you find somebody who is divergent to the culture of the organization Howl up, take him to task, and remove that problem. The sooner you do it, the more you know you stand to save the future of the organization. Because if you compromise once, I bet on this, they're going to have more instances like this following up soon. So any person, be very sure on how you're hiring the right talent. Be very sure of that one person does not align with the cause. And as soon as, soon as you and and the last thing which I think is very important, it seems easy. Do not diverge from what you stood for at the very beginning. Because you do that once, that message would precipitate across the organization. And the first thing they'll do is they'll question your commitment. They may not speak it to your face, but they'll start the whispers and eventually come to hear it. So uh, be very clear what you stand for, have that communicated and let the whole organization align to it. And somebody does not, you know, put the bill, take corrective action as soon as possible. Thank you so much. So how would you suggest doing that town hall meetings, regular uh, you know, email communication, how does a top-down messaging, you know, happen? So how I uh, personally do that is that, uh, number one, I keep my phone lines open and I keep meeting my people regularly. And uh, I do not believe in, you know, authority or supremacy and all those uh, virtues. Uh, I'm perhaps the chief servant of the people who I serve. And I take that uh, tag with a lot of respect and a lot of duty. Uh, which is which that tag brings to me and the second thing is that I'm okay with people you know making mistakes that is fine but if I find that the intent to which uh, that mistake happened is questionable then I feel that's not something which can be pardoned be very strict on this if the intent or the actions are somewhere divergent to what the organization stands for uh, that's not tolerable thank you uh, so much uh, quite thought-provoking and uh, very interesting. I now move on to Deepika and uh, Ashwarya. Uh, both of you are treading on tough terrains, may I put it uh, that way. Um, of course, you as a filmmaker, you are trying to focus on men's rights, right? And uh, you are breaking the norms by focusing on women pleasure. 
So while you wanted to stay committed to your purpose, uh, there may be have there may have been tough decisions that you had to take, which was very close to your purpose, but it was extremely challenging for you. So would you mind sharing with our audience today, you know, any such experience that you have had? Uh, Pinky, I think my work in itself is the biggest challenge. Uh, I remember when I started uh, way back in 2012, uh, and uh, that the first thing that I began was to make a documentary on Paul's dowry cases. Uh, I uh, a lot of people don't know it, but I used to work with uh, Exchange for Media, and Mr. Batra used to be my super boss. And I told him, sir, I'll come back uh, uh, after making this documentary and rejoin the organization. And he said, please go ahead. Uh, but when I started making the documentary, I realized that um, getting money for something to do with men's rights is extremely, extremely important. So I, I heard Arjun in the beginning on getting the money from here and paying it to the poor. Like, for us, there is just no money, you know. For the last 12 years, there is just no money because uh, this is not a cause that people even think that it is a cause. So uh, I think my biggest challenge has been to uh, survive financially, uh, but uh, the tough decision that I have taken, and to very quickly sum it up, is that this is something which matters. Uh, I say it often that for a healthy society, we need to have men and women as uh, you know people who complement each other and who not compete each other to destroy each other. And uh, right now, unfortunately, uh, this in in this zest of competition. Uh, people are not hesitating to actually destroy each other for their own vengeance, revenge, extortion. Uh, I don't want to get too much deep into my work, but uh, there are just very, very horrible stories uh, that are happening with men that are not told. In 2012, when I decided to make this documentary on false dowry cases, there was no film made, there was no documentary made, there was no full-fledged news report that would focus on this problem, which had impacted thousands of people. So the biggest challenge was to raise a voice, stand for it, no matter if people call me woman hater, no matter if people call me misogynist, no matter what people call me and judge me as, I know that I'm doing work which is extremely, extremely important and something which is to do with social justice and encouraging people to have a life which is meaningful and with uh, dignity. It can be a woman, and it can be a man as well. So my biggest challenge is to break the stereotype that if it is a man, he can never be a victim. So that's what I deal with every single day. Thank you. Is it working? Yes. Anyways, firstly, Deepika, uh, I'm inspired by your story that you just shared. Um, I guess we need women like these and everyone who is sitting over here today. Um, I deal with women every day and what I have understood so far that, okay, so sexual health or sexual wellness as a topic is very male centric in India. And let's accept that fact, first of all. When it comes to Women, we have always been like, okay, you have to uh, look a certain way, be a certain way. This is what it is. They have been a passive partners into the like the relationship. And I guess that's where we need to change it. And it's okay. When Gen Z is coming, Alpha is coming, they are into the internet. You can't hide. And we being as parents, though I am a parent of dogs, but then still. <laughs> it's like uh, we being parents in this age, like millennials, we will change the norms we will break them and we will create new rules that probably will be um, better for the generation coming in where sex education will not look like oh it will look like yes it will be a round table conversation it will be a dining table conversation yes i am having sex can you please guide me help me or if i should not have and if that conversation happens, I guess one uh, family at a time, if we do, that we are doing every day, the world will change. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was um, quite interesting uh, to hear both your personal experience. 
Uh, I would now like to turn over to uh, Savesh. Um, I think during the course we heard about how important trust empowerment in different contexts, whether trust uh, to the leadership, trust to the brand, trust to the purpose and empowerment as an individual, etc. So, uh, according to you, how do they correlate in a purpose-driven leadership? And also, what strategies do you recommend for building trust within teams? Uh, we have seen the phenomenal growth of um, you know, your party. So, so what are those ingredients that all of us out here can also learn you know, in our own domains? मैं इसको एक और उदाहरण के एक एग्जांपल से समझाऊंगा मुझे लगता है कि सरकारें नियत और काबिलियत से चलती हैं अभी सब लोगों ने शार्क टैंक के वो प्रोग्राम्स देखे होंगे और काफ़ी यूथ भी गांव से लेके शहर तक का देखता है और ढेर सारे आइडियाज स्टार्टअप्स के नए बिजनेस के देख के लोगों को बहुत अच्छा लगा कि इतना सब कुछ देश में चल रहा है इतना इनोवेटिंग है इनोवेटिव है बहुत कम बजट में है सब तरफ लगा लोगों को अच्छा लगा दिल्ली सरकार ने एक बिजनेस ब्लास्टर्स प्रोग्राम चलाया था अब मैं आज की सभी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज़ को ये कहता हूँ कि जितनी पार्टीज़ हैं गवर्नमेंट्स हैं उनको वो ट्रेडिशनल तरीके छोड़ के नए नए चीज़ों पे आना पड़ेगा हमारी सरकार ने एक बिजनेस ब्लास्टर प्रोग्राम चलाया आप यूट्यूब पे उसके ढेर सारे प्रोग्राम देख सकते हैं सभी नेशनल टेलीविज़न के जितने चैनल्स हैं सब पे ब्रॉडकास्ट भी हुआ जिसमें हमने सरकारी स्कूल के बच्चों पर भरोसा किया और ये कहा कि अगर आपके पास कोई आइडिया है जिससे आप कोई बिजनेस कर सकते हो तो एक फ़ंड है हमारा हम छोटा अमाउंट आपको देंगे आप उससे अपने आइडिया पे काम करके लाओ अगर वो आइडिया अच्छा होगा तो हम आपको और फंड करेंगे जैसे शार्क टैंक में आपने देखा होगा शार्क टैंक में लोग खुद लाते हैं यहाँ पे सरकार ने खुद कहा इससे दिल्ली के ढेर सारे वो बारहवीं क्लास से छोटे बच्चों ने कई कई चीज़ें लेकर आए कि हमारे पास ये बिज़नेस का आइडिया हम एक क्राफ्ट बना लेते हैं हम एक टॉय बना लेते हैं हमारे पास पानी की टंकी की हॉर्न मतलब ढेर सारे ऐसे आइडियाज आए और हमने बच्चों को फंड किया साठ करोड़ रुपए दिल्ली सरकार ने दिया मैं सिर्फ ये इसलिए आपको उदाहरण बता रहा हूँ कि आज जितने भी हम स्टेज पे बैठे लोग हैं सभी अलग अलग तरीके जो भी हम करते हैं कि अपने देश को बढ़ाने के लिए अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए अगर अच्छी सरकारें हों अच्छी नीयत और काबिलियत वाली हों आज के दौर के हिसाब से चलना चाहती हूँ और उनका पर्पस क्लियर हो तो उसका रिजल्ट तुरंत आपको देखने को मिलता है थैंक यू सो मच एंड जस्ट होल्ड ऑन आई माय अनदर क्वेश्चन आल्सो आई वांट टू गो टू यू वी ऑल नो दैट देर आर सक्सेसेस बट व्हाट अबाउट फेलियर्स एंड व्हाट्स योर थॉट ऑन फेलियर्स कुड बी अ लर्निंग अपॉर्चुनिटी एज वेल डू यू हैव एनी पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस इन दैट Uh, हमारे पर्सनल भी हैं लेकिन मैं थोड़ा इसको लार्जर स्केल पे बताऊंगा क्योंकि मुझे लगता है मेरा पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस बहुत ज़्यादा मायने नहीं रखेगा नॉर्मली uh, जब हम अपने प्रोफेसर्स हैं उनके पास जाते हैं जो पॉलिटिकल साइंस और इन सब चीज़ों की नॉलेज रखते हैं तो वो कहते हैं कि पॉलिटिक्स में नेता सॉरी नहीं बोलते हैं गलती नहीं मानते हैं वो गलती कर देते हैं बहुत ही एक्सट्रीम हो जाता है लेकिन मुझे कुछ चेंजेस दिखे जो मैं आपसे कहता हूँ कि ये देश का सबसे तेज़ी से बढ़ने वाला पॉलिटिकल स्टार्टअप है आम आदमी पार्टी तो जब 49 डेज़ की गवर्नमेंट बनी थोड़े दिन में हमारी सरकार नहीं रही तो हम पब्लिक के पास गए और हमने बताया कि देखिए 49 डेज़ में हमने गवर्नमेंट तो अच्छी चलाई आपके लिए काम किया आप लोग हमारी सरकार हमने इस्तीफा दे दिया हमारे लीडर अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने लोग नाराज़ थे हमने कहा कोई बात नहीं हमने फोर्टी डेज़ में भी अच्छा काम किया अगर सरकार अभी हम नई सरकार बनाने का मौका दीजिए हम फिर काम करेंगे हमने माना कि हमने हमसे हमने सरकार से इस्तीफा दिया है नए बार दीजिए लोगों ने फिर से भरोसा किया एक ट्रस्ट जब आप ईमानदारी से कोई काम करते हो लोगों में जाते हो लोगों को भरोसा देते हो तो लोग फिर से आप पे भरोसा करते हैं और लोगों ने जो पहले हमें मैंडेट दिया था उससे बहुत बड़ा मैंडेट दिया और फिर से इंडिया के पॉलिटिक्स का हमने कहा कि वो एक नेरेटिव चेंज करने का काम किया हमने तमाम पॉलिटिकल डिफ्रेंसेस के बावजूद भी आज देश की तमाम ऐसी सरकारें हैं जो कि लोगों की बेसिक एम्यूनिटीज़ की बात करती हैं तो हमें खुशी होती है हम किसी भी पार्टी में हो किसी भी दल में हो कोई भी थॉट रखते हो लेकिन जब ये बात होती है दूसरे स्टेट्स में भी कि महिलाओं को चलने के लिए बस फ्री दीजिए या वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट की बात करिए या बच्चों को फ्री में पढ़ाने की बात करिए या गरीब और अमीर के बीच का जो डिफ्रेंस है उसको ख़त्म करने की बात करिए जब ये सब चीज़ें होती हैं तो हमें अच्छा लगता है थैंक यू सो मच अमिताभ आई एम रियली क्यूरियस टू हियर योर थाट्स एज वेल ऑन दिस Uh, because uh, having a vision and leading a not-for-profit 
and as a very young person. I'm sure like uh, across this journey, you, you may have come across failure. So how did you turn it into an opportunity? No, this is awesome. I think uh, actually in childhood, my father taught me something that I was doing at night and I was doing it for years. I was doing it for years. Write down 10 things that you are grateful for, thankful for. You know, they were saying that be positive, be positive. In school, they were saying that, but how do you become a teacher? They didn't teach them. So he said, so I would write down, thank you that I have a teddy bear. Thank you that I switch the button, light comes on. Thank you that I have warm water. Thank you that my mom gave me pizza. Whatever. I was writing such small things. I wrote for about 25 years. I have books in my books. So my brain was wired towards looking at the good in every situation. So now there was something that was coming. So my first thought was, there was something good in this situation. So my first thought was, there was something good in this situation. So my first thought was, there was something good in this situation. कहीं से फंड आने वाला था वो थोड़ा डिले हो गया इसमें भी कुछ अच्छा ही है तो पहला थॉट ही वो आता है कोई बीमारी आ गई इसमें भी कुछ अच्छा ही है तो व्हेन द फर्स्ट थॉट कम्स दैट तो आप सॉल्यूशंस इजीली निकाल देते हो और आप पे कुछ उतना स्ट्रेस या फेलियर मायना नहीं रखता बिकॉज यू जस्ट फोकस ऑन ब्रिंग सोल्यूशन तो थैंक्स टू माई डैड फॉर दैट हैबिट यू शूड डू दैट फॉर ऑल द पेरेंट्स यूर थैंक यू एंड वी सी यू एज अ मोटिवेशनल कोच एंड अ स्पीकर प्रिटी सून uh, moving on, um, I want to now shift the focus from trust, empowerment, and leadership towards more, uh, you know, issues such as being inclusive and diverse, and putting that into the purpose, leadership, and the business strategy. And for this, I want to go to Ashwarya, uh, Deepika, and Arjun, just to hear how you are, you know, bringing this element into your uh, leadership strategy. Okay, so I guess this is a very important topic for uh, any organization or even if in any groups in personal we sit in. Uh, inclusivity and diversity is something that creates a lot of togetherness in the company when it comes to awareness, ethical like responsibility that we get by being with each other and understanding what is there. And also there's a lot of innovation into the place. And when that happens, growth is, uh, growth doesn't look challenging to you into the organization. And I guess this plays a very, very crucial role and everybody should be given equal opportunities, should be either it's from women, men, LGBTQ, and we as a brand are for women LGBTQ, but when it comes to um, being inclusive, it means that you are given with all the opportunities that are for women, men, and also for people who are already trying to come out. Probably they don't know who they are yet. Like respecting them, understanding them is also one way to bring it in the organization. And also take care of how might, how can one feel at times when it comes to emotional like security and also the growth aspect of the LGBTQ. I'll be focusing on that because men, men women, we know. We, we are aware people over here. But when it comes to LGBTQ, yes, they are coming out of the closet. And we, as aware people, should be taking care of them as well and bring them in a group and feel like, OK, boss, we are together. Yeah? And that it should be like. Thank you. So I'll uh, share two stories, my personal uh, interaction about this subject. Um, I had gone to give a talk once, and this was in Chennai for one of the organizations. And the co-panelist in this talk was the CEO of a leading um, Indian traditional sari brand. And uh, she must be my mom's age, or even maybe a year more aged than her. And what I noticed was, as you were sitting on the dais, and she you were individually going to speak, um, she asked me, can you take snaps of me? And what was running in my mind at that point of time was that she must have given umpteen number of talks, right? And must, thousands of talks she must have taken and spoken about. And what more adulation of fame is she thirsty for? That she needs this, uh, you know, picture taken of hers. And is there an end to that thirst? Or is it endless? So I understand, you know, that adulation, that, that little uh, seconds or minutes of fame which is you know, given to you once you're on stage. Uh, yes, let's concede people are hungry for it. But the second story is now is this. 
that is it <laughs> no i won't come in yeah we just love taking pictures <laughs> no, no, I'll, i'll let that pass and the second story i want to share was that uh, there was another incident where there was a college interaction and at this point of time i was invited and i let one of my employees go and uh, give that talk and what would have been expected was that perhaps i would have you know uh, urged for that opportunity and i'll tell you why i did that i did it very selfishly why i did that was that i wanted to create a second tier of leadership i wanted to tell my people that you guys are as important in the growth story of navit and you all have also contributed to the same extent that i have maybe i'm the face but i go with the confidence because i know that i have done the work thanks to you all who have backed me on this and so you deserve the same level of you know fame or whatever comes with it and you have done no less than what i have done so when i got the call from the organizer that we expected you and i told them that you know kavit would be representing me he said wouldn't you want this opportunity and i responded i'm telling you with a lot of confidence he will do a better job than me yeah. right and he did that and what what happens because of that is once he comes back to office and tells with pride that you know i have been given this opportunity it sets the narrative inside the organization that you know what if you can perform and you can imbibe the values you would also be given that opportunity and there is no you know price tag which can be you know put to it that this is the cost for it eventually money is important i absolutely concede and uh, let's be honest it is one of the biggest motivators but beyond a point uh, self respect pride is equally um, a very big pro uh, promoter too and if you can empower your team you'll see the results because the intent and the passion which they come with would get quadrupled uh, post that so that's my take on inclusivity and leadership uh pinky first of all i don't have uh, uh, a, such a big team that i would talk about inclusivity and diversity from a personal experience uh but what i can share from my journey is um i deal with men who are socially ostracized because they are falsely accused and people believe that they are guilty before even their guilt is proven i have uh, taken a lot of these young men uh, to organizations uh got them hired got them given a job when they were thrown out of their job on mere allegations uh some of the people who got these people placed have come back to me telling me that they are exceptional performers and thank you know they are very thankful to me that they did not judge them just only because they were accused of something uh there's a young man who was almost paralyzed completely i raised crowd fund for him and uh, he had to eventually pay alimony uh, even though that person could not even move and was on a wheelchair but we crowd funded money for him and we got him out of the cases that person does the most beautiful counseling for me as of now when people come to me asking for help so all that i have to say about this is a person who is sort of set aside from the society and you know for various biases that we have कि ऐसा है तो ये नहीं कर पाएगा ऐसी है तो ये नहीं कर पाएगी वेन यू गिव दैम रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड अ चैलेंज एंड इम्पोज योर ट्रस्ट इन फेथ इन दैम दे आर द मोस्ट ब्रिलियंट परफॉर्मर्स सो वेन इट कम्स टू इंक्लूसिविटी एंड डाइवर्सिटी आई आई पर्सनली फील गिव अपॉर्चुनिटी टू पीपल हु आर यूजली नॉट थॉट ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग वेल एंड यू वुड सी हाउ ब्रिलियंट दे वुड पुट दैम सेल्व इन टू द जॉब thank you so much uh, i think uh, your story was really courageous and these are the signs of a secure leadership so great um i mean you know as in communication is always two way and i think as leaders feedback is also two way right it's it's extremely critical um so how do you take feedback as a leader and how do you also give feedback and do you value feedback as a culture and this question i want to pose to sarvesh arjun and ashwarya it's working yes i guess i'm the first person who take the feedbacks from the people i i am in this case obviously when it comes to you want to lead with purpose right i guess the most important aspect is to take feedback 
from your people for yourself and introspect every then and now if you are doing it right. When it comes to giving feedback, obviously it should be very much in a understanding of the problems and the solutions given to them in their way and it should not be forced to anyone. I guess this is where feedback takes place, where you are figuring out the problems together. It should never be like, okay, aaj, uh, ye hua, chalana shuru kar Le there are like leaders like Toxic that. Toxic leadership. Exactly. So when it comes to uh, new age like leadership, I guess it should look like more like a friendship and not uh, blaming each other in any like, like situation. I guess that's the case. What I believe is uh, no jargons, no niceties, no politeness. If I have messed up, be on my face and speak it in as many words. Because if you have messed up, I would do the same. Right? So if you can have that culture where there's no fear of the leadership, right? And if you can set that thing, it's, very, it's a very critical thing. But if you can set that thing in place, it will ensure that everyone, A, feels that he has a voice or she has a voice. And second, I can tell you with confidence, it will contribute in the larger goal in a very, uh, in a way better way than, you know, having a culture where nobody's allowed to speak to you, nobody's allowed to call out your problems or uh, the issues where you have wronged. So that's what I believe. One thing is, in today's time, feedback mechanism, there are a lot of things that I would like to say that the government should not do it. अगर गवर्नमेंट दिन रात लोगों को छोटी छोटी चीजों के लिए लाइन में खड़ा रखती हैं तो मैं पूछना भी चाहता हूं कि 70 इयर्स हो गए वो कभी पूछने चाहते हैं कि भाई वो लाइन में आप लगना क्यों चाहते हो अगर आप बैंक की लाइन में मैं कह रहा हूं सरकारों के पास इतनी सुविधाएं हैं आप लोगों के घर बैठे बैठे काम करा दीजिए आज गांव में इतनी बड़ी-बड़ी कंपनीज की बड़ी-बड़ी चीजों की डिलीवरी पहुंच चुकी है लोग परेशान हो जाते हैं अगर किसी को एक सर्टिफिकेट बनाना हो तो 10 दिन तक सरकारी दफ्तरों के लाइन में खड़े रहते हम एक सर्विस लेके आए दिल्ली में डोर स्टेप डिलीवरी पचास रुपए में आप घर बैठे बैठे अपने 150 तरीके के सर्टिफिकेट्स बनवा सकते हैं तो मैं आज की गवर्नमेंट को कहता हूं कि आप लोग एक फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म अपनाइए अच्छी पॉलिसीज लेके आइए ढेर सारे इंटरप्रेन्योर्स हैं यंग ब्रेन्स हैं जिनके पास बहुत अच्छे अच्छे आइडियाज हैं वो ट्रांसपेरेंसी के साथ करप्शन फ्री सिस्टम के साथ लोगों को सुविधाएं दे सकते हैं क्योंकि जब हम लोग एक बेसिक एमिनिटीज जो हैं लोगों के समय बचाएंगे लोगों के पैसे बचाएंगे तो वो लोग इस देश की तरक्की के लिए काम करेंगे तो इस डेमोक्रेसी के लिए हमारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के लिए गवर्नमेंट को बहुत जरूरी है एक अच्छा फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म बनाना एक फंक्शनिंग का एक अच्छा सिस्टम बनाना थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच uh, I'll now quickly move on to the next set of questions. Um, this is to Amitabh, Smita and uh, Deepika. How do you measure the impact of your initiatives? And uh, are there any specific metrics, etc.? Uh, so basically what I want to know is that how do you, how do you arrive that your organization has met with the success that you had outlined? So any thoughts on that? It's an excellent question. And now uh, there's a policy as well that if any company gives you more than one crore, compulsory impact analysis karana hi padta hai. So, uh, you know, Narayan Murthy used to say that in God I tr trust for everything else, I need data. And I'm a big believer of that. That data is needed for every single thing you're doing. Uh, before even we start the project on ground, with every company we work with and we implement CSR for about a hundred companies from Bank of America to HDFC to Nomura Bank to uh, Quan Ferry, all these guys, Anstanya, they design ke impact is ki kya hogi. We have to sign off on it. Ke bare minimum itni impact aap laoge. And another thing that we are doing is that khud khud ki tarif karna to bhoat easy hai. Ke haan, humne bhoat achcha kaam kiya, hum mahan hai, ye ho gaya, wo ho gaya. So we always engage a third party auditor. And in these 5,000 schools across 25 states where we have worked in, London School of Economics did an impact study where you've done the solar, the water harvesting, the bathrooms, the teachers training, the smart classrooms. And they found a four times improvement in maths and science and a 15% improvement in attendance. And just a couple of weeks ago, KPMG released a digital classroom impact study of the schools where you are unstoppable has intervened in. And they found that 
98% of the teachers and principals said that there is an improvement in outcomes, improvement in attendance, and improvement in teaching efficiencies. So it is always good to get this impact analysis done from third party. And no matter who you go to now, they're all going to ask you, especially from a CSR, a grant making perspective, what is the impact? And who has done it? I run a for-profit for structure and a not-for-profit structure. So for the not-for-profit structure, we do training and development. So obviously, impact assessment is like how many beneficial, how many trainings did we conduct, and you know what is the achievement at the end of the year? What is the number of different different uh, you know trades that skill skill training did we do? What are the different partnerships that we did? For the for-profit, of course, it's like I always say, it's what is your turnover this quarter? How much money did we make and everything else? Um, Couple of things. One is in the last one and a half years, we could tie up with National University of Singapore, International Society for Fetal Diagnosis. They all reach out to People Tree Foundation and IMSOC Foundation, which is uh, you know the, I'm founder of those two organizations, and for their uh, for their corporate gifts, for their uh, you know for the conferences that they do, they want a partnership. They want to show our film on their screen and everything. ISPD um, and many other international organizations. That is, I think, an uh, you know impact. That means we have done well. They are reaching out. You know, so our books of accounts are very clear and very transparent. And uh, uh, I was just mentioning. I, I feel very proud to say this that uh, you know, in just one. The school is just one and a half years old, and in that one and a half years, apart from many many things that we teach our children, Taekwondo is one of them. And children are participating so wholeheartedly. Uh, in the last one and a half year only, uh, we've all we just did is providing equal opportunity, nothing else. They went to state level they they won gold silver bronze they went to national they were you know uh, pushed to go, go to national level they went to national level they got gold silver bronze and very recently they went to south asian where 11 countries participated my bachas they got gold and bronze so i think that is the impact assessment yeah that is the impact assessment uh, you know that is the non financial motivation a lot of people may have the impact is very money minded it's also the other kind of uh, you know motivation that we have one is financial, one is non-financial. So one is khali without the other. One is not complete without the other. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Deepika, would you like to come in? Uh, Pinky, my impact analysis of my work would be very, very simple, not, not too, too big. Uh, from 2012, when I started to 2023, from times when there was no film, no visual, uh, uh, representation of the issues that I fight for were there to now I have made full two full-fledged documentaries uh, that are b being seen across the world which are telling people that when we talk about gender-based violence when we talk about gender discrimination we have to talk we should at least try to talk from both the sides because there is problem from both the sides apart from that uh, my impact analysis is very very uh, daily basis uh, when I uh, am able to save uh, a person who comes to me saying he's on the verge of suicide to the point where he decides to fight back and fight for himself and his family, that's an impact analysis for me. Uh, when I have cases where uh, people who were falsely accused have been able to uh, you know, take guidance and then implement them there in the cases and get relief from the court, that is a success for me. Uh, when people who thought that this is the end of life uh, to a point where they actually become uh, fighters and not just for themselves, try to help other people who are in the similar situations, that's a success analysis for me. So mine is a very, very day-to-day -day basis analysis. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, we have received the cue that the time is up, but I want to request uh, the organizers if we could throw one or two questions from the audience to our panelists. Uh, may I ask the organizer if that's okay? Uh, if Devika, is that okay, Devika? All right. Thanks, Devika. Uh, may I please request that you keep your question direct and to the speaker that you want to, it to be addressed? The mic. Smita and Amita, both of you shared uh, that there's been a very good scale up over the last few years. If you could just share with the audience two or three of those uh, points where you and your journey have realized those were essential for the kind of scale up that you both were able to achieve. That would be good for all Sir, of us. Sir, may we know your name, please? Uh, yeah, I'm Yogesh from Society of International Development. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question, sir. 
sir, first thing is that the whole idea of starting the business, the social business was, um, you know, to make a difference to the society and make it sustainable. Um, that was the first point. Now, when we started seeing money coming into the organization, now what are, are we utilizing the entire money uh, well? You know, are we able to channelize it, channelize the money, uh, you know, back to the society beautifully? I think that was that happened over the last few years. Of course, COVID, you know, took away. But you know, the amazing work also we have done during COVID. We have raised, um, we we tied tied up with Danzo and We Fast, and we were able to reach out because our bachas are already into the reading habit now. Uh, I don't know. This is this is a little off the top topic, but just can't uh, resist myself from saying this. Um, we started reaching out books inside the slums for children through Dunzo and WeFast. Finally, Dunzo and WeFast, we are not charging you anymore, you know, because it's a, such a noble cause. So because children started, you know, children had no books also to read, nothing to do, you know, and very easy. children who are hooked to books, they will not get hooked to any other things, you know what I mean. So we, we started, we continued to, you know, provide them books and everything else, apart from tons of other work that we have done. Um, uh, so I think we see that the journey, we have progressed beautifully. We have progressed from giant leaps, actually, from starting from one, five women only who I started working with. And today we have 52 women across uh, six different slums. They are highly skilled. I mean, um, you know, progress has happened. You know, these jackets are made by my women. And they are very fashionable, very in today. But just to, just to let you know that, you know, I, very, I'm, I wear it with very, a lot of pride. And um, so this is progress, you know. Just to, to stitch a kurta or something, it's pretty easy. Many, many, anybody can be trained. But to, you know, such, such difficult designs. So this is how we have progressed very slowly and gradually. Children, when uh, we started the school, there were only about 20 children. And today we have 60 children. One room only, if you come to the school, you will know it's in Asia, not too far away from here. It's just one room. And then we, we have 60 children. Sometimes the children have to sit outside also, you know, just to attend the class. Uh, but this is how I can tell you we're growing. MCD has uh, proposed, uh, you know, our organization saying that we are we we want to give you hundred more spaces. Please take them, and you know this is growth. I think this is how we have grown in Lipson. They want to, they want us to take over hundred more places where we can run more, uh, you know, uh, more schools like this or more other training institute, institutes, you know. Uh, so that's I think uh, for me is measurable growth. Thank you. I love the diversity of answers here. I'm going to keep it very brief and answer that, you know, I feel that Lakshmi Mata ke aashirwad nahi hai, mujhko unhon apni godi mein bitha diya hai. Because what I've realized now is that achche kaam ke liye paiso ki kami nahi hai. Ye desh mein, I've realized it. There's huge amount of CSR philanthropy happening from all over the place. Achcha, meaningful, impactful, on-ground kaam karke dikha hai, wo zyada logo ki humare desh mein abhi zarurat hai. So just two simple things. One person told me three years ago, which really transformed the way our uh, funding was coming in almost 10x. And that was, he said, okay, whoever is doing CSR with you right now, ask, number one, ask for a lot more from the same partner because he's done the due diligence. He knows the impact you are creating. He knows you, your team. So ask for a lot more from that person, number one. At least three times a year, they should meet the beneficiaries. It can be a Zoom call where they're talking to the Safai Karamchari in the school who's saying, toilet itna acha ben gaya, pehla hum ko ye dikkat ho di, ab hum saaf easily kar rahe. It could be a parent saying, ab meri beti school apne ab ja rahi hai. It could be a, a girl saying, ke, I'm working in Goldman Sachs because of the scholarship I got from you. Whatever it is, thrice a year at least, online or offline, the leadership team should be engaged. And not just CSR person, you should have at least three, four people in the company who are connected with you, who are champions for your NGO. Number one. And the second thing he said was, ask them to introduce you to one more person, one more company. Not too many, but one more company. Essentially, they'll end up doing two or three, call karke bulling, are ye sansta itna acha kaam karti hai, mein school mein gaya hu. Aap jaye, check out ki je, bohat acha lagega aapko bhi. And because they are good friends, and they have to give away CSR, 50% kaam wahi ho jata hai, who makes the introduction makes a difference as well. So there's no more cold calling needed anymore. So these two things, go deeper and ask them to introduce you to one more person uh, has really worked beautifully. And I would request that if you've got someone on board, continue to kind of build that relationship year after year with them. At least 80% of your current partners should stay. 
राइट लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर एवरी ईयर नए नए पार्टनर आते हो पुराने वाले चले जाते हो दैट्स अ लॉर्ड ऑफ चर्निंग एटलीस्ट एटी परसेंट शुड स्टे द ट्वेंटी हु लीव यू शुड लर्न फ्रॉम इट एंड इम्प्रूव दट एंड गो डीपर इन द एटी थैंक्स थैंक यू थैंक्स अमिताभ फॉर द प्रैक्टिकल टिप्स एंड ऑल्सो फॉर शेयरिंग यूर स्टोरी uh before i conclude uh, one last thought anybody would you like to you know share any thought insight yes please impact analysis pe main ek baat kahunga ki mujhe lagta hai ki kisi bhi government ko aaj ke time pe dher sari aisi organizations hain jo social audit kar rahi hain impact analysis nikal ke government de rahi hai pichle kai saalon se delhi sarkar impact analysis pe ek social audit karati hai jiski report uh, uh, vidhan sabha mein di jati hai jaise जो भी बजट हम एलोकेट करते हैं नेक्स्ट ईयर के लिए वो बजट कितने पॉलिसीज पे काम किया कितने हमने जो वादे किए वो पूरे हुए कि नहीं हुए जब नेक्स्ट बजट आता है तो हम विधानसभा के अंदर एक सोशल ऑडिट रिपोर्ट देते हैं कि उन पॉलिसीज ने कितना काम किया कितने बेनिफिशरीज हैं कितना बजट एलोकेट किया और उसका कितना एक्सपेंडिचर हुआ और बहुत अच्छी चीज़ है सभी लोगों को देखना चाहिए दूसरे स्टेट्स में भी उसको लाना चाहिए अभी उसी का एक एग्ज़ाम्पल देता हूँ हमने दिल्ली में फ्री बस दी कई लोग के इस पर हाँ कई मत हो सकते हैं ओपिनियंस हो सकते हैं देना चाहिए नहीं देना चाहिए हमने उसका इम्पैक्ट एनालिसिस कराया कि आखिर में इसका फ़ायदा क्या है उससे इम्पैक्ट एनालिसिस निकल के आया कि कई काम करने वाली जो औरतें थीं जो पहले दूर नहीं जाती थीं कि पैसा लेगा ज़्यादा नहीं बचेगा वो जाने लगी लड़कियाँ जो कोचिंग जिनका दूर था वो अपने कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट्स और इनको जाने देने लगी कई बाज़ारों में जब महिलाएं पहुंची तो बाज़ार में लोग जो मार्केट है मार्केट रेवेन्यू बढ़ने लगा तो इस तरीके से सरकार ने देखा कि हम लड़कों को भी बढ़ाते थे तो सामान्यतः माना भी जाता है तो सरकार हमारे लीडर का भी मानना है कि जब कोई एक लड़का बढ़ता है तो सिर्फ एक लड़का बढ़ता है पर जब कोई लड़की या महिला बढ़ती है तो पूरा समाज बढ़ रहा होता है तो वो उस पॉलिसी का हमने एनालिसिस कराया और उसके इम्पैक्ट से हमने देखा कि नहीं इस पॉलिसी के ढेर सारे बेनिफिट्स हैं और कोई भी रेवेन्यू लॉस नहीं और आगे भी कंटिन्यू होगा जिसका दूसरी तरफ दूसरी सरकारों में देखने को भी मिल रहा है तो मैं आप सब से भी ये दूसरी गवर्नमेंट से भी ये कहूँगा कि जब भी इम्पैक्ट एनालिसिस के सिस्टम को ढेर सारे अच्छे लोग यंग इंटरप्रेन्योर्स बहुत अच्छे अच्छे टेक्निक से कर रहे हैं उनको गवर्नमेंट में इसको ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लागू होना चाहिए और हम सभी को चेक भी करना चाहिए कि जिन पॉलिसीज को गवर्नमेंट ने अनाउंस किया है उसका कितना प्रॉफिट हमें हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा है थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एंड विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड आर पैनल डिस्कशन आई थिंक यू ऑल अग्री दैट वी हर्ड सम ग्रेट प्रैक्टिकल टिप्स वी ऑल्सो अंडरस्टूड दैट इट टेक्स अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ करेज टू बी अ लीडर अ पर्पजफुल ड्रिवन लीडर एंड दर इज नो i think limited to chasing one's dreams is what we also learned and break the norms i think that's the new mantra whether it's the norms to you know defy some traditional role some traditional way of doing business uh so yeah shake up um, our country is on a roll uh, and so are our panelists and everybody here thank you so much for a great evening thank you